Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome in to another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. And we start off today's show with Coach Spurrier, who, of course, is brought to you by Melden Law. They won't back down. And you were out there in College Station uh, for that game Saturday. Hey, I highly recommend, if you're a college football fan, you ought to go to a game there. Yep. Uh, the pageantry before the game and at halftime is unique. I, I, it's I, different, I've heard yeah. about it. <laughs> so uh, we go with the team playing and uh, have the have a staff dinner the night before and everything. It's a noon kickoff or 11 o'clock out there. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we get there plenty early. And uh, Texas A&M. It's sort of a military school, but it's also just a normal right, state university. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, an hour before the game, these beautiful horses, and I mean they are beautiful. They're all about the same color, big, strong. It must have been 50 of them. They parade around the track, which is around the game field. Slowly they went all the way around and, and out the gate and so forth. And then all the cadets that have been there, if you – went to school there in the 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s, any time, yeah. you can come back and march around the field. So they introduced Company C from 1979, <laughs> 1984, blah, 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 our group from this year, that year, and that year. And they were in platoons, oh, maybe of about uh, 20, 24 or 28, something like that. And they marched, you know, left, right, left. Did you ever take ROTC? No, I did not. Well, my, I did. My, uh, my uh, my high school in Johnson City, you had to take ROTC you for did? two years. And I had to wear that dang cadet uniform uh, <laughs> two days a week. And uh, But anyway, so so I knew how to march. Oh, you. yeah, <laughs> I, I had uh, the cadet uniforms. So they did that before the game. And then at halftime, their band, I mean, they put on a show. Yeah. They marched between each other. And, and march, I mean march. Then they march this way between each other <laughs> and this way. They, uh, they went for about 10, 15 minutes, and it was it was spectacular. So I highly recommend go out there and watch a ball game. Yeah, get it is different. It and is we, different. Had, we had a pretty good bunch of Gators out there. That's what was, I heard. There was yeah. 4,000 4, or more. Yeah, so well, I think people wanted, wanted to mm -hmm. make that trip. Yeah. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people want to mm -hmm. do it one time. And the good thing was you got to see the Gators win a game, and you, and you actually got to see – Florida play defense for an entire half. The second half, <laughs> we looked like, you know, top 10 team almost. <laughs> Golly, we, and actually, we didn't score on the one yard line another time. I mean, we could have beat them about 30 yeah. to nothing in the second half. But, uh, yeah, the offense was, was pretty good the whole game. Very good, really. And, and the defense, the second half, was a completely different bunch. I think we stopped eight third down attempts and all that. Uh, so it was a good win, and hopefully uh, give the team confidence as we're going into this South Carolina game. This is a big one this week, and uh, really looking forward to this week one as we're honoring a couple of our teams That's from right. the 90s. Yep. Yeah. 92 so, and 97? Yeah, we're bringing yep. back the 92 and 97 teams. Neither one won the SEC, but they were really two teams that maximized, I think, the talent on the team and so forth. Uh, first of all, the 92 team. We uh, was the most inexperienced, youngest team of all 12 that I coached here. Uh, we had two freshman offensive tackles, oh, know, Jason yeah. Odom and Reggie Green. And uh, Shane had another outstanding year. Eric Rett, of course, the leading mm -hmm. rusher in school history. And uh, somehow or another, we won the division and took Alabama, the national champ, down to the wire in the first ever SEC game. Uh, but those guys won the Gator Bowl. And we finished 10th in the nation, top 10 team. And, uh, and then the 97 team, we actually lost two conference games, and that's all we lost. And the, we beat the two teams that played for the SEC, Tennessee and Auburn. I know. But, uh, and, but that team beat FSU when they were number one in the country in the swamp. I think it's the only time it's ever happened. In the swamp, yeah. we beat the number one team. So that 97 team, then we beat Penn State in the bowl game. They finished fourth in the nation. And we don't talk and about those are them. considered the down yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he finished fourth in the nation. And Spurrier <laughs> didn't win the SEC that year. 
But that was a good team. And, you know, sometimes you lose games. It doesn't work out. Uh, but those guys hung in there and finished strong at the end. Top ten teams in the country. It's kind of interesting that you had the opposite situation. You had a senior quarterback on the 92 team mm-hmm. and a guy in Doug Johnson just starting his freshman you know, well, sophomore year, but Play he lot. hadn't played very much as, as a freshman. So mm-hmm. it was kind of a different dynamic, but they were both really good teams. Yeah, they, they ended up very – uh, very strong. They got better as the season progressed. As a coach, that's what you always hope. And uh, even though they didn't win an SEC, uh, top uh, top ten in the country, and the other one, of course, four in the country, and uh, beating the number one team, that's, that's never been done before. And uh, so that's something, the 97 team and the fans, that was one of those memorable games here. I'm not saying it was the most well, a biggest lot of people win in the swamp. A lot of people say most, it was. Yeah, yeah. The 32-29 uh, Dwayne Thomas got the intercept at the end. Quezzy Green, Doug Johnson, and Noah are rotating quarterbacks. <laughs> the rotators, uh, we could call them. And, uh, of course, Quezzy had a big uh, catch there, and Fred Taylor and so forth. So, anyway, Bobby Stoops is coming back for is this Is he one. really? Yeah, I told him. I said, if you're not him. doing anything, uh, you need to come back and see your 97 team here. Because uh, his three years here, Pat, uh, we finished first in the nation, fourth and fifth. So I, he could easily be considered the best D coordinator oh, yeah. uh, in school history. Absolutely. And uh, mm-hmm. certainly that team, uh, that 97 team, mm-hmm. played at a very high level in, in the games mm-hmm. they lost. You know, I mean, obviously the Georgia game, Georgia mm-hmm. was loaded that year. It was the one year they really had a good team. You know, Heinz Ward was really good, guys like that. Yeah, they had a lot of good teams. We, we stunk. And they, right. they played well. They, they thoroughly beat us that game. Uh, and then the LSU game was 28-21. And, uh, I mean, we were we were favored in both of them. But uh, it didn't work out. Uh, but the Auburn win was a big win up there with uh, Jesse oh, yeah. Palmer uh, played most of it. And then Noah came in. And Noah played. had to come in because yeah. Jesse was struggling. <laughs> and that was uh, Quezzy Green. He ran for one. He threw for one. And he caught a touchdown that day. So that was a memorable Quezzy Green day. Christian McCaffrey just did that. Did that the other day. Yeah. First thing I thought about was Quezzy when he did I, that. That's exactly what I thought about. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what's going on with Anthony Richardson, who seems to have finally gotten uh, figured mm-hmm. things out three games in a row where he's mm-hmm. played well and no turnovers for Anthony Richardson yeah. in those three straight games. Yeah, he threw the ball well. And, uh, again, I think he should take off running more because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, he can go all the way. Uh, when he broke that one, we were sitting up there watching, and uh, ain't nobody going to catch him, that's for sure. Yeah. And then one of the guys, he said he actually coasted in the last 10 yards. Uh, but he's fast, and he can go, and uh, made really good decisions. and No, no turnovers, as you say. And uh, we need that to be South Carolina. You know, they beat us pretty good last year. They did. It was, that was a sad day up there, night. Uh, we, that, we, was, that was the – That was led to the downfall of yeah, Dan Mullen. Yeah, kind of the right low there. point. It and, really was. And I know so, that, that – that, I know that uh, Scott Strickland did not feel that mm-hmm. uh, they had played hard. And when, when Dan said after the game that they had played hard, and he was like, what? What are you no, talking about? A, so that was kind of yeah, the was, beginning of the end, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a sad night to, to watch our guys attempt to compete up there. It, was, it wasn't good, yeah. But they are competing, and that's one mm-hmm. good thing. That's I right. know you, you, had, you had a guy mm-hmm. leave the team or get thrown off the team this week. You mm-hmm. had another guy clear out his locker. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of weeding that mm-hmm. part of it out. But the rest of the guys, that, that, mm-hmm. I've never felt like they're mailing it in, or mm-hmm. they're they're not, you know, they're not playing as hard as they can. Well, that's uh, what a coach has to do. He has to weed out if he thinks a player has a bad attitude. You, mm-hmm. you, just, you just can't. You, they, they don't need to be on the team. Uh, one thing that I always tried to emphasize to our guys, and most of them did it, if you're not playing, be a dang good cheerleader on the sideline. Right. You know, cheer guys, they can hear you. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Billy. Let's go, Jimmy. Come on, let's go. They can hear you. And all that really just helps the entire team to, to pr- perform better. really does. Yeah, I remember after that 97 loss at LSU, you were mad because ha- the hang-around guys weren't doing anything. They were just kind of Standing watching, there watching the game. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, so mm-hmm. it, it – uh, but I, mm-hmm. the way, you know, everybody, I know a lot of people, we, you and I have had this conversation, mm-hmm. people act like – Coach Spurrier, well, when he came in, he just threw it all over the place. And, of course, you you believed in the run game, and you guys well, tried to well, be 50-50. This team seems like it's leaning the other way, but they've been so effective. 
290 yards rushing in this game. Oh, you got to have balance. I'm a big believer in that. And, of course, uh, I was fortunate to coach the leading rusher in school history, and he's going to be here for the reunion, uh, Eric Rett. Rett. Yep. He played 90, 91, 92, 93. Uh, he won three SEC championships, uh, most valuable player in the Gator Bowl, and, uh, again, the all-time leading rusher. So he's got to be considered maybe the best running back in school history. Uh, Emmett Smith, of course, only played three years, and uh, Fred didn't get all that many carries. Uh, but Eric Rett was an inspiration uh, every year uh, that he played here those four years. I remember when, uh, when we, we were hearing that Emmett may leave, and I remember people telling me, where do you see this Rett guy? It's not like it's going to be that big of a fall off. I mean, it, no, Emmett's the all-time leading rusher in, in, in NFL history, mm -hmm. but Eric Rett was going to be a great player for Florida. And, he, and you also had Willie McClendon back there, didn't you? Yeah, Willie played yeah. Uh, a bit, uh, but Eric was so solid. And, you know, he caught more passes than yeah. any running back in school history also. So uh, he was a complete back. And uh, when you have a guy like that, uh, to me, you got to let him play, let him be the leader of the team. And, uh, of course, uh, Fred Taylor, his last year that uh, that he was here, that 97 year, he, uh, I think he got 43 carries against Penn State. He did. So yep. we, we featured him a lot that year. Yeah, well, you kind of had to, you know, because they were, they were mm -hmm. struggling to throw it around. But, yeah, it was interesting, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, let, let us get to our uh, Campus USA play of the game, which we feature every Monday. And this is it, Coach, and I know you – you love to see a receiver go up and catch a ball like this. That was really a real good throw. High outside, yeah. and uh, I got his name written down here. Ja Jaquavius Frazier. Jaquavion. Jaquavion <laughs> Frazier. Yeah, it's got an end on the end. I'm just I didn't know about it. Yeah, Jaquavion <laughs> Frazier's, and it's, yeah, it's Frazier's with an S. And then Caleb Douglas caught some passes. Yeah. Uh, some new guys getting a chance. Well, Shorter oh. was out, and, that, and, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. Yeah. Frazier's got hurt on that play, and I thought he'd, like, broken his wrist because he came off holding it. He went back in the game and caught another pass later yeah. in the game, so that was good news. But with Shorter out, somebody had to come through, and I think that's yeah. that's huge when you have a player get, get go out with an injury. And like now that. now he, he's he's a big-time player. All these guys, they caught everything thrown to him, and uh, it was a, a very good performance by these guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. and obviously South Carolina, uh, senior day. Senior day, how was it for you in terms of making sure guys didn't get too emotional? Now, I don't know that it's going to happen with anything. Ventro Miller uh -huh. might, may have a problem with it. But, you know, with Danny kind of running out there, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. his senior day, there had to be some tears in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know as coaches. I think we, we got our – Minds on the ball game, yeah. the plays we got to call, and this, that, and the other. But, uh, but certainly the head coach uh, shakes hands, and the parents are out there, and so forth. So, yeah, every every school goes through it, and that's uh, that's part of going to college. You get to play four years, and uh, fortunately, just about all of our guys they played yeah. the four four yeah. years. Yeah. And uh, in fact, uh, going back to that '92 season. Jason Odom, we wanted to redshirt him with Danny and Donnie Young and Jeff Mitchell and all that uh, number one recruiting class we brought in, and uh, but, but I had to put him into play, and he was he later said I was hoping to redshirt. Yeah, who got <laughs> now, hurt that year that you had to play both those freshmen? Was there well, a no, no. Somebody got benched. Uh -huh. That's what happened. <laughs> and I told Jason, you're not coming in to play behind whoever was over there. I, yeah. I forgot who was over there. I said, you're coming in to be the starter and probably the rest of the season, which he was. Yeah. Uh, so he was a four-year starter, and uh, he, he only won three SECs in his four years since we were runner-up that year. Yeah, not bad. Runner-up. Yeah. I, I got to talk to you about the other games that were played in, in college football. What a crazy – to be sitting here mm – -hmm. And no, on November mm -hmm. 7th, yeah. and Alabama's basically out of the college football playoff mm -hmm. mix. I, I just mm -hmm. didn't seem like this mm -hmm. was a great Saban team. Well, who knows how great they, they are. They did win two close ones against yeah. Texas and Texas A&M, and now they've lost two close ones to Tennessee and uh, uh, LSU. LSU. And both of them were on the road. Yep. And uh, I think what we've learned uh, – 
Tennessee won at home, Georgia won at home, LSU won at home. So the home field advantage in the SEC is huge, and, and all the coaches mention that. When they win a game, they all praise uh, those fans up there going crazy. And they were. They were all three uh, great games. Uh, the Bulldogs got ahead. They had a good defensive plan they for, for uh, Tennessee. And, Their uh, plan was basically don't let anything go over your head. Yeah. And just attack Another. when the when the ball was. Well, they also they, they also schemed up their pass rush. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that when I do a podcast tomorrow. Uh, I get a chance to go on the board, but they schemed it up, and, and they had one free guy running at the quarterback a lot of times. And uh, sometimes you can't use the same pass protection. You got to adjust yeah. to what the defense is doing. I don't know if Tennessee adjusted all that well because they, he had pressure on him uh, most of the game and. Uh, they had pretty good coverage also, and no deep ones, yeah. I saw a stat that said he was hurried 20 times. Uh, yeah. I guarantee you he hadn't been hurried 20 times all yeah. year, totally. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. what, what – and, again, Georgia's got the athletes that they can do that. You know, not everybody's got those kind of players. Well, they play that three-man line, yeah. and you're not going to run up through the middle much against any of that. Yeah. And uh, so they got the guys on the edge. Sometimes they come. Sometimes they rest the inside guys, and they mix it up. And – uh, the Tennessee protection uh, certainly had trouble with it. So uh, anyway, that was uh, that was important. And then the LSU defense, they had a spy guy yep. uh, for Bryce Young there. He, he'd hang out behind the three-man rush waiting for him to come inside out of the pocket. So they tried to contain him, and, uh, and that, that helped LSU a bunch also. You know, I, I, somebody was asking me about the uh, – Brian Kelly going for two there mm -hmm. to go ahead and win the game. And I'm like, well, this is kind of the new college football mm -hmm. where people are saying, mm -hmm. let me go ahead and try to win it. Let me go ahead and score as, as many and, and, and points as I can. And we, with these mm -hmm. new overtime rules, the way they've changed, you feel like yeah. if we have a chance to win it, let's go win it. The other thing, though, I say is Brian Kelly's playing with house money right now. So he, if he mm -hmm. loses that game on that call, people aren't that upset. Yeah. You know, but now – they just love him and, you know. Well, they had the same thing as FSU, and then they yeah. blocked the extra exactly. point. And he said, oh, my dummy, I could have gone for two and maybe had. <laughs> but I think they felt really good about that play. Yeah. And it was, you know, there was Sky Alabama. Motion, yeah, yeah, they didn't pass it off. Usually when you have that little pick pass, they, they zone it up. When they see it coming, they yell something or another. But two guys run slant, and that, that tight end, you know, went for the pylon and got a good throw and dove in there. Amazingly, the Tampa Bay Bucks, their win yesterday, yep. they hit the tight end right there in that right, uh, right. inside corner exactly. of, and, and won that game uh, also. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, – I think he felt his defense could not maybe stop Alabama anymore. They've, mm -hmm. they've done enough. Let's try to win it right now. And it worked out. Yeah, that uh, the, the tight end who caught the touchdown pass or the mm -hmm. two point conversion is mm -hmm. Jason Taylor's son, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't realize he was yeah. Jason Taylor. But uh, but now Mississippi fresh, State, you know, they kicked a field goal to tie uh, to go into overtime, and then uh, uh, Auburn guy missed the field goal early, yes. so they were able to sort of get it in there and end up running it in. But, uh, man, I, you know, I, I always thought that uh, the home team had a little edge in overtimes, but uh, not necessarily, I guess. It's not It's not always true. Yeah, I was stunned at that game because it looked like Mississippi State was going to blow them out. Early. They're mm -hmm. way up. And then South Carolina, I mean, um, Auburn was able to come back. Mm -hmm. and, they, and you give them credit. I mean, they're playing with an interim coach. Half their staff has been fired, let mm -hmm. go. Um, but it was kind it of was fun a... to watch Cadillac <laughs> Williams on the sideline. <laughs> he had his own show over there, I tell you. He was fired up. And I tell you what, he had his guys playing hard. And like he said at halftime, we're not going to quit. I know that. And for a minute, it looked like he was going to be the winner because Mississippi State struggled mightily on offense for about three quarters and a half. And then finally, uh, the kid Austin Williams made that low catch on mm -hmm. fourth and yeah. two or something, fourth and three an inch off the ground, uh, or the game's over. Auburn wins if you don't make that catch, and they hit a touchdown right after that. But anyway, uh, Mississippi State's got Alabama this week. And uh, I, I don't uh, – Georgia, I'm sorry, or got Georgia. Do, yeah. and, and that, uh, At home, too. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the air raid doesn't go far against good defenses. No. So I'm worried and, about and um, Mississippi defense, State. Yeah. yeah, I'm worried about Mississippi State this week. Yeah, Alabama's got <laughs> Ole Miss this weekend. So uh, mm -hmm. that'll be interesting. But mm -hmm. I don't know how much 
I mean, we're we're probably going to are looking at a Georgia LSU SEC championship game. Yeah, right now, uh, obviously, Georgia's in uh, the top position. And who'd you say is in top LSU. in the West? LSU. If LSU wins out there. They go. Yeah. Uh, but they only have one loss. If they played, they hadn't played Ole Miss yet. Yeah, they beat them. They beat them a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's what that's just I their one loss. You're right. I had to look yeah. it up the other day. Yeah, that is like Ole Miss's one loss. Twenty-five, twenty-five. Or yeah, like you're that. right. Yeah, they are in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah exactly so right. That that is pretty amazing to uh -huh. do in in the first year. Um, yeah. And I, you know, everybody was making fun of him and trying to fake accent that he was doing yeah. in preseason. Well, out. he found that quarterback. That, that wasn't their starter at the beginning of the year. Oh, no, yeah. It's amazing. Sometimes you got to play everybody to find out who your best players are. I found out that kid transferred from Arizona State. Yep, yep. I didn't know that. And Emory went there. Yeah, Herm <laughs> Edwards might still be there if he'd, he'd say, you're, well, you're our quarterback. That guy's a heck of a player. You know, the funny man, thing is, Steve, when I watched a lot of their games, Arizona State games, and – he was so talented, yeah. six three, could run. Oh, but run. he wouldn't do. He would. You would watch them play, and you go, "Why did he do that? Why did he make that mistake? Why did he do that?" He would. He. It's almost like he had to get the right coaching and a right mm -hmm. change of mm -hmm. scenery to become the great player he was. In fact, when he yeah. came in here to play Florida, people weren't that high on him, and then that game Bang. kind of elevated. Him. Threw for three and ran for three. Yeah, yeah. And it's he's kind of taken yeah. off from that. Point. You know, I heard him on the radio today talking about the offensive coordinator that uh, is at LSU now. He was at Cincinnati right. uh, with Fickle and those guys last year, and Kelly got him to come to LSU. So uh, uh, I tell you one thing about these schools like A and M and LSU, if they're paying the head coach about. Nine, ten millions. Uh, those coordinators make probably a couple million yeah. or so. They don't care what they have to pay them. So they can, you can go out and get who you think are the best. Uh, I know Jimbo hired the guy from Ole Miss who was here yeah. uh, at Florida at one time. PJ Duncan. DJ uh, Durkin. Durkin, yeah. Durkin. Who yeah. was actually yeah. the interim at, head coach for the Birmingham Bowl. Yeah. So, and they won that game. And he was at Ole Miss last year. And uh, and like Kiffin said, they had more money than we did for assistance, so that's why he said Texas A and M now. That'll be the interesting thing to see if if Lane Kiffin makes a move because mm -hmm. oh, there's so many openings, mm -hmm. including Auburn, which I don't know where they're going to go. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Hugh Freeze, and I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, there's a lot of baggage there, but. Yeah, they talk about Deion Sanders, too. Yeah, they talk exactly. about those two guys. Who knows uh, the direction uh, that they'll go, but they, they could certainly get both of those guys and, and not have to buy out of yeah. a, a bunch of people or whatever. All right, Coach, you got anything else for us? Oh, not too much. Just uh, looking for the for the ball game this week and looking for our team to, you know, continue showing improvement. You know, South Carolina beat us about two or three touchdowns last year. Oh. So uh, 41 yeah. 17 or yeah, 42 yeah, 17. Yeah, something hopefully like that. our guys got a little bit of memory and, and come ready to play because uh, South Carolina's got a good team. They, they're already bowl eligible. Yep. And we're, we're not there yet. So we need to, we need to try to get there. No, they need got to win one more, but yeah. they, and that's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see if they can do that. Okay. But um, all right, coach. So we'll let you go and we appreciate him coming on too. as always on Mondays, a Meldon Mondays, as we like to call them. Yep. And he's brought to you by Meldon Law yep. and appreciate us him also doing the Campus USA yeah. play of the game. So uh, we appreciate him being on and we'll come back with the hand law starting lineup and all the other fun stuff. When we return on another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. This is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call-ahead carry-out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, Wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it.
great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727-372-6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of men other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150, and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? Okay, and welcome back to another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Appreciate Coach Spurrier being by. Uh, made me kind of made me laugh a little bit. It's, it's been a tough day or a tough weekend. I don't know how many of you heard the news that Major Parker passed away at 44. Uh, that, that certainly, he was kind of the beginning of the whole Billy Donovan. I, I think even though, uh, Tay DuPay gets credited with being the first big Billy recruit, I think major was the first guy to actually commit or sign, uh, and the enforcer on those teams. And of course had a little bit of problems, but, uh, um, had recovered from them and everything. And, uh, I don't know what was going on. Apparently it was a heart issue. Uh, but that's really sad. And then also a friend of mine from a long time ago, back in my Times Union days, Bobby Smith passed away. Um, he'd been to, he had been to my house for many parties. I mean, you put it that way. We're also 
softball teammates. Uh, but, you know, this is unfortunate that when you get to my age, and I'll be a year older by the time we do the show next Monday, um, it uh, it's hard. It's like people die around you. It's, certainly don't expect anything like Major Parker passing away. But try not to bring you down too much. Just get it back up. I know a lot of people are happy with what happened over the weekend. And especially, I'm sure Chris Hand was happy because – I was I am able to talk about something good instead of something negative. And maybe I've been too negative over the last few weeks, but I have been negative. I don't nobody's accused me of that because I think people most people were feeling the same way. Anyway, well, let's get to the starting lineup. The starting lineup as always is presented by Hand Law, a Florida law firm which helps clients with government. You can learn more about Hand Law by visiting its website at www.hand.law.com. Hand.law. That's the way it is. www.hand.law. The firm is available for consultation in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. All right. Let's get to the starting lineup. Number one. After after the game Saturday, I started to look up. I said, what, what has Anthony Richardson done on the road? And the numbers were incredible. He's only played two games as a starter on the road. 794 yards, eight touchdowns on the road. So then, you know, I went out to dinner with uh, Chris Harry and, and uh, Cindy Harry. Um, had a good time with them. And uh, he said, you ought to look at it every road game he's played. And I said, yeah, so I did. So he's only been in five road games. Three last year, two this year. True road, I'm talking about two road games, not the Florida-Georgia game. True road games. Because that's the toughest environment, like Coach Spurrier was saying. And the numbers were incredible. It's 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns responsible for in five road games. And one of them was that um, Kentucky game last year where he didn't really play much. They, they stayed with Emory Jones for the most of the game. The numbers are incredible. And, and again, this this is maybe, maybe there's a reason for it. I don't know. But there's also this stat that you have to look at. In the last three games for Anthony Richardson, 863 yards responsibility, seven touchdowns, zero turnovers. Now, Florida lost two of those games, but it wasn't a Richardson problem. It was a defensive problem. There's no question about it. Richardson maybe didn't do all the things you'd want to see him do, but he still put up really good numbers and was good enough, certainly was good enough for Florida to win the LSU game. I don't know if, if – he was pretty good, considering he put up more points against Georgia than Hendon Hooker did this weekend, right? So he's maybe getting it, and it's kind of interesting today. I think it was Montrell Johnson was asked about him, and he said, "Man, I can't wait! I can't wait till he's going to be back for next year." And, I, and everybody's like, "What?" And he no, he's there's a lot of sentiment certainly to have him. That hope, that hope he comes back. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm not going to worry about that right now, okay? I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right, so that's number one. Number two is the way the defense played. Coach Spurrier talked about it a little bit earlier. Here's a great stat. You know me. I love stats, okay? And, and stats, Steve Spurrier used to say, stats are for losers and assistant coaches. And to a point, he's right. But stats do ill. I don't think they're – they're a be-all, end-all, but they do illustrate what is going on. And we gave you all those unbelievably negative defensive stats before, and they are, and they still are on a pace to break the all-time record for yards given up uh, per game in a season. But all of a sudden, it for some reason, they got good in the second half of that game. No points, obviously. and uh, But this is the stat that I do like. Florida is now plus eight in turnover differential which I think is one of the biggest stats you have every year. Turnover differential. Penalty differential is another one, and, and obviously they had too many penalties, but they, it's weird. They had 10 penalties for 39 yards, which uh, that's, that's a weird – but too, way too many false starts, four of them on the right tackles. Uh, but I'm not going to get down on anything, okay? Florida, with those that plus eight turnover differential, is 12th in the country. Tied for 12th in the country. That's how you win games. Now, they've gotten much better 
Richardson's gotten better at not turning it over. They've gotten better at taking the ball away. They're still 128, but they're that's better than 130, at which they were before in third down defense. Um, but one big factor in that game as well, the first three times Texas A&M had a third down, they converted, and you're like, oh, we're in for this again. Then they had 10 more first third down conversions. They got one. And they, they finally got good. Now, I don't know why. I don't know if it was Antoine. I, I screw his name up all the time. Antoine Powell um, Riddell. Is that it? I, I Anyway. Uh, I don't know if it, him being inserted in there with Brenton Cox done, done ex Gator, that's what I call him. Uh, whether it was Lloyd Summerall playing a little bit more, maybe some guys played, and they played with a chip. Maybe they played harder. Maybe they played with an edge and maybe wasn't there. I don't know. All I know is the first half, they were awful again. It was the same old thing. In the second half, something happened. Now, the question is, can they carry it over? I don't know the answer to that. I don't. You know, maybe Texas A&M's just that bad. I don't know. Uh, and again, you, I don't know that you're going to find out a ton more, but we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, number three on the uh, Handlaw starting lineup, brought to you by Handlaw, is the uh, that the, and Coach mentioned this. They only need to win one more game to be bowl eligible, but I don't think that's the goal anymore. I I do think there was a point where a lot of fans and a lot of even the maybe the coaches and players were thinking, man, we got to get to a bowl game, got to get to a bowl game. And you still do. You need to win one more game. You got South Carolina, Vandy, and Florida State. Florida State on the road on a Friday night. It's going to be a tough place to play. You saw what happened with them. It's bizarre, to be honest with you. But the, there's no doubt that's going to be a tough game. You're at home, senior day, but Anthony doesn't play as well at home. Maybe, well, I think this will be a good illustration from that aspect. And then, of course, you still got to on the, go on the road and play Vandy. That game will be at 11 o'clock their time, uh, 12 o'clock here. Uh, you should be able to win the game. But I think you want to finish strong. I think you want to sweep. I think you want to at, at the very least go 2-1 and one in these last three games. And and ha and look, if, if we all said 7-5 and five felt like what this team was going to be, and then if you go 7-5 and five with, the, with the way things were going so badly there for a while, I don't – you know, I think there it is kind of a more you want more. And don't forget, Florida's not that far away from being seven and two right now. Obviously, the LSU game they got off the lead and just screwed it up. The Kentucky game again was Anthony not playing well and really playing bad, hurting his team. But um, they that's how close they were to are to seven and two. Um, all right, that is number three. Number four was how great Saturday night was. Um, it was just so much fun to watch those two games. Boy, if you don't have two TVs set up for a night like this, man, I don't know if we can be friends. you gotta ha you got to have to have two TVs for that to watch those two games come down to the stretch. A lot of things I did not see coming. I certainly did not see Notre Dame destroying Clemson. I mean destroying them. And basically knocking the ACC out of the picture for – being in the playoffs. Uh, I did not see uh, FSU destroying um, – I did not see FSU destroying Miami, and uh, that was just sad for Miami. I certainly didn't – I thought Tennessee was going to beat Georgia. I, I, I think a lot of us have got a new appreciation for how good a coach Brian Kelly is and Kirby Smart, and that's what Billy Napier's got to deal with. That's what Billy Napier's fighting right now. Maybe he's getting Saban on the decline. I'm not saying he is, but possibly. This does not look like a Nick Saban team. I think they had 10 penalties again the other night. They had 15 when their other loss um, to Tennessee. But again, they lost by three to Tennessee on the road in overtime to LSU on the road. But they've had all those other close calls. It just doesn't, I'm not saying he's on the decline. I'm saying he might be. It might be it's kind of going the wrong way. And, of course, he just got a big, huge five-star quarterback coming in. But quarterback's never the problem at Alabama anymore. It's getting other guys to do some things. But 
We'll see how that goes. And finally, uh, number five on the Hanlaw starting lineup. Congratulations, I guess, are in order for the Astros winning the World Series Saturday night. I did not watch any of it. I didn't watch hardly any of the of the World Series. And it's just because I didn't like I don't like either team. And the Phillies are in my division. The Astros are the Astros, and we all know about the, the, the scandal there. But the one thing that I can at least be happy for is Dusty Baker. I'm I'm happy. I think he's the oldest manager that ever won a World Series, 73 years old. And he's an ex-Brave, and I loved him as a player for the Braves. So I'm happy for Dusty Baker. You know, he got the nickname Dusty, rolling around the dirt. Boy, if that's not perfect for a guy who's just been grinding away, had his chances, never been able to do it. So that is my consolation for the Astros winning, and I, I guess congratulations. All right, we got to get a break. We'll come back, and we will get to all of uh, our fun stuff, including – Yes, Nowhere, maybe with Robbie Andrews, we do every Monday. You are watching or listening to another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities just look at gas streaming services and heck even chicken wings well there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life and the fine folks at titan mri agree with costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital you'll not only save money you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience so when you need an mri Call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board-certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727 372 6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peas and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of men other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150 and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, 
speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter, Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any Campus Service Center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented, as always, by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. As always, it's fun to talk on Mondays to Robbie Andrew to do Yes, Nowhere. Maybe Robbie comes to you courtesy of Hesser and Kipke and also comes to you on the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. Um, so we'll play uh, Yes, Nowhere, Maybe, which is also brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak Street Dining Done Right and um, sponsor not only of this, but also to have committed to the Bob Dooley again for next year. So, Robbie, I heard you went to a great wedding this weekend. Huh. Okay. So, while we were watching the game, yeah. To be honest, it was kind of boring. You know, uh, yeah, there was a lot of great games, though. Um, it was unbelievable. Um, that game and then, um, you know, the Mississippi State-Auburn game, which you didn't think it was going to be any good and ended up being great. Great finish to that. Um, you know, the one, Robbie, that I think probably surprised you as much as it did me, Miami FSU, you figure is going to be come down to the fourth quarter and, not be done by halftime. They don't look like they're trying. Especially all those fans leaving at halftime. But, you know, I, I know they're going to make the same. Well, you know, it's Manny Diaz's players and everything, whatever. Well, it is what it is. All right. Um, and then, obviously, you did get to see a little bit of the Florida game, right? Okay. It, it was like the first drive, you know, an A-chain – takes it around the end. They've got it actually. They've done their job, but then he comes back. Nobody's got contained, goes for 65 yards. And you're just like, it's going to be the same game. Florida's going to have to somehow score more points. And the second half, I think they had six straight. Well, they shut them out in the second half, but I think it was six straight stops, which we haven't seen two straight, I don't think, this year. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll see if they can build on that. Let us do time for Yes, No Way or Maybe brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak. Number one, Robbie, it'll be Georgia and LSU for the SEC title in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, Oh, well, yeah. And the funny thing is, Georgia would have to lose twice, right? So that's not happening. Uh, you know that. So you know the dogs will be there. And, and I would think, like, it would be kind of typical of the series if Arkansas blew it for LSU. Uh, and then, of course, they get A&M at the end of the year when A&M by then may not be able to feel the team the way they're going. But uh, – that I mean, for Georgia and LSU, or for LSU to be in the SEC championship game when it like, looked like after that Tennessee game, they were they were done, they were finished. 
is amazing. Yeah, and for Anthony Richardson, you know, his stats and uh, we I gave his stats earlier in the last three games are pretty pretty darn impressive, so maybe it's starting to work for him. Exactly. Exactly. Um yeah, I maybe you have an answer for why he's so good on the road. I mean, it's he's got a he's got 15 touchdowns on the road in, in 5 games. And most of them not as a starter. Yeah, and don't forget he he went through it with Emery last year, and Emery's mom got so upset because fans were so being being so critical. So, you know, obviously. It is, and Anthony is a very sensitive guy. We know that. So um, uh, we'll see how he plays in this last home game. All right, number two on yes, no way, or maybe Hugh Freeze is the next coach at Auburn. Really? Yeah, the other, the other thing is, how good of a job is Auburn? Like, it feels like it's a great job, but then you've got to deal with the meddlers. And I don't know if it's a great job. I mean, it happens at other places, but nowhere like it happens at Auburn. You know, flying planes out to get uh what's his name a uh, Petrino you know and and wanting to fire Harson after one year and then firing after a year and a half so it's just weird it is all right finally on yes no way or maybe number three Robbie you will have a happy birthday on Sunday Oh. Well, you know, I'm hoping to. Uh but uh you're still you're still the older one of the three two of us. No. That and you can never stop that, you know. I guess if I I guess if you died you wouldn't be older than me anymore. <laughs> it's Let's bring death into the equation. Yeah, why not? All right, well, happy 39th on uh, Sunday. All right. All right, let us go. Guess Nowhere Maybe by Robbie Andrew. We always love having him on the show. We got a lot to get to in a short period of time. Um, we, we had a lot to talk about. I knew we would because I could, I could talk. I could do a four-hour show today. Uh, but let's get to the Adam Trip Code to go Gator the Weekend. Maha Amir is our Gator of the Weekend. So I probably didn't say her name right, but she was part of Florida sweeping Tennessee, ranked on rank there, and, and swimming and diving. Florida won in both the men's and the women's. And uh, Amir set the school record in the one-meter diving, and uh, her score was 350.55. She broke the record that was held by her coach. Kalia Warner, I probably screwed up her name too. Kalia Warner. That sounds more like it. All right. But so um, Maha Amir is our Adams Rib Co. to go Gator of the weekend. I did go by Adams this weekend. Can't have a good week, football weekend without Adams Rib Co. to go. Um, all right. Let us get to our Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks. We'll give you a quick one here. Um, there, I did. We did have a lot of you picked Florida to win that game. He, um, Florida was only getting, what, three? And a lot of you picked Florida. So uh, a lot of you qualified, and we'll have a, a new winner in a couple weeks, maybe even less than that. Um, all right, so 
I was going to put some other game, but look, there, there's a lot of Mac games on. I'm not a big fan of them, but I will watch Central Michigan just for glimpses of McIlwain. Uh, Central Michigan, this is Wednesday night, I believe. Central Michigan is at home, and they're getting two points against Buffalo. Lance Leipold's old team. So that is our Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks. Central Michigan at home getting two against Buffalo. Uh, let us get to our Gainesville quarterback club games of the week. Uh, Sean Kelly speaking Tuesday. That'll be, be a lot of fun. Look forward to that. Of course, he's doing his first basketball game, I guess, right, um, tonight. Um, there's not a lot of ton of, there's, there's a lot of Mac games. If you want to know what they are, go look them up. I don't, there's no point in me giving to you. You're probably not going to watch them anyway. I'm not even sure. There's probably a big game on the Mac in the Mac and I, I don't know what it could be, but, uh, I did want to let you know, Baltimore at new Orleans tonight, Monday night game, Atlanta at Carolina Thursday night. I'm falling asleep at that one. Um, the Buffalo Central Michigan, by the way, is at seven on ESPN two. Volleyball play doesn't play till Saturday. They play at Texas A&M Saturday and then come home. Huge weekend next weekend. We'll talk about more uh, later uh, when they play Kentucky. So that is our Gainesville Quarterback Club games of the week here. And again, Sean Kelly is the speaker. You can become a member for only a hundred bucks and go to these last three meetings. What a great deal. It's worth it just for the great meals you get out there at the Best Western. Um, and they are really good. We had an unbelievable meal last week. It is time for us to get to the Hesser and Kipke three things. Three things is always brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a law firm based in Hale Plantation, specializing in employment, workers' comp, and family law. Visit their website at www.hklawfl.com or call Ken and Jennifer at 352-339-9920. I did get a really lovely picture. I should have brought it in and put it up, uh, of Ken and Jennifer at the World Series on Saturday night. I'm sure they're not happy with the way things worked out, uh, but, you know, they got there, so and they got to go, and they I'm sure it was a great year for, uh, for them, not the best year that you want. All right, number one on the Hester and Kipke three things. I start thinking about the highs of when it gets to be November, okay? I, I know that I think about it. I, I don't not think about it. That's a double negative. That's not good. But I really start to focus on, all right, who am I going to vote for? And I'll be honest with you, Stetson Bennett is right there. And I, I'm thinking about maybe he might be the guy I end up picking. Now we got to wait and see how things go. Um a lot of guys have played their way out of it. It's funny. Bo Nix is a lot of people consider him to be the front runner now. I'm like, mm. first of all, what happened when Stetson Bennett played Bo Nix? I think it was 49 to three. Okay. What was the other huge game that Stetson Bennett just played in against Tennessee? He was a better quarterback in the game. At some point, we've got to acknowledge how good he is. There's no way I'm putting Stetson Bennett in over Bo Nix. No way. I mean, Bennett destroyed him. I mean, he won up and down the field. He's really good. Now, is he going to be an NFL quarterback? No, I don't think so. But he'll be the best stockbroker, I guarantee, in Athens, Georgia. Um, and he's having a, a storybook career. Uh, but I am at least thinking about the Heisen. Um, I was going to bring this up with Coach, uh, but we uh, number two on the Hester and Kipke three things. Uh, there was a game, SMU beat Houston 77-63. 77-63, okay. But I, I decided not to bring, not to talk too much about the game because there was a firing today. Another coach got fired, Jeff Scott, the coach at USF. Boy, when he was here and he almost beat the Gators, don't forget they had a field goal at the end to tie it and put it in overtime. You're thinking, man, this guy seems to have things turned around. Then he got his quarterback hurt and a lot of things have happened bad. Uh, overall record four and twenty six. It wasn't working. Okay, I don't know how you win down there. I mean, you, you should be. They should be better than four and twenty six with the area they get to recruit. Uh, anyway, uh, also Frank Reich also got uh, fired today by the uh, Colts, and I'll have a story on him in just a minute. 
Uh, so those were the latest in firings in college or in college and the NFL. Finally, number three, basketball tonight. We can talk a lot about basketball, and we'll talk a lot about them as well. Let us get to our, I think it's the last thing we have to do, the Pat Dooley story time, right? That's the last thing I think we have. All right, story time, as always, is presented by Eastlake Pediatrics. We appreciate Mike and the good folks down there in uh, that area, Tampa Bay area, that area-ish, Pinellas County around there, uh, for story time. And so this is going to be a, this is a good one. I'd forgotten about this until Frank Wright got fired, and then I went, Oh, yeah, remember that time? Well, the reason I remember Frank Reich, and I am always associate him with this, I am covering the South Car- – I want to say it was South Carolina FSU game in, in Columbia. I, I'm pretty sure that was the game. Might have been a different one, but I know it was in Columbia. Uh, but anyway, so I'm there, and I'm watching – I'm watching, though, on TV. We all are. In front, one little TV. It's not the new, new way where you've got all these – big screens and HDs, but these, this was just a regular color TV. It wasn't very big. And all of us are huddled around at watching the end of the game between Maryland and Miami. The greatest comeback in college football. Miami's up 31 nothing. Frank Wright comes in and leads them to a, a come-from-behind victory. Unbelievable game. And I'm watching the I'm watching it, and it's over, and, fi- and they're, they're – um, they're uh, the fan, you know, the fan, they're showing, they're ta- interviewing different people. What do you do after a game? You talk to the, the coach and the different people and a, and a voice comes up behind me, really quiet, kind of squeaky little voice and goes, man, he really, that's unbelievable what he was able to do today. Frank Reich, man, that was unbelievable. And I'm like, I turn around to see who it is. Jack Nicholas is standing right there. His, and he was asking me uh, uh, some questions about it. I'm like, I bet, 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 bet. I mean, to me, it's almost like meeting a beetle when you meet Jack Nicholas. Now, maybe one of these days I'll tell you the the my bad Jack Nicholas story, which was my fault. But I think I may have already told it, but I'll tell it again sometime. But um, his son, of course, played for FSU uh, at the time. But anyway, that's my uh, that's my story, Jack. <laughs> when you look over, what the H? It's Jack Nicholas. It's, it's weird, weird. Anyway, that is going to do it for uh, another Duly Noted Podcast. Thanks so much for those of you who watch. Thanks for those of you who listen. Thanks for you, those of you who are listening a day later or whenever you're listening. We appreciate you so much. You're, you're the ones that make this thing go, and you're uh, our great sponsors. God, we love them so much, and um, the relationships we form with them, such a great job. Jason went solo today. And got it done. Booyah. I think Tammy will be back Friday. She's getting all of her teeth taken out. So that'll be a fun look. For her. We'll have to see what it looks like. All I know is we have to get out of here. It's time. We're out over time as always. We'll be back on Friday with Heath Klein, our friend Heath Klein, to talk about South Carolina. Um, so we look forward to that. Until then, I am Pat Dooley saying I am deep. I am way back, and I am out of here.